from the soul with it. What's going on, everybody? The Allen Ricks coming to you live with yet another video. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be a part of the notification squad, squad, squad. So I got to talk to y'all about the Cleveland Cavaliers and how they have revamped their roster. They have new players. They've added Larry Nance, Jordan Clarkson by me being a Lakers fan. I was kind of upset to see Jordan Clarkson go, but I felt like Clarkson was a person who needed to leave in order for him to blossom. Pretty much, I showed majority of the people who were on YouTube Live with me the other day, I showed you everything that I said would happen to the Cavs from the beginning of the season, which was around like October, around like August, when they were starting to uh, sign these guys picked up, you know, and made these trades, Jay Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, you know, I can show you guys everything that I said, and I was going back and forth with one of my, you know, one of my friends who claimed they know basketball more than me, you know, I played basketball, elementary school, middle school, you know, but it got to a point where I was able to study the sport and not just look at it from a fan perspective and, you know, where I could actually analyze, look at the numbers, you know, look at things analytically and learning the plays, hearing the coaches speak at post-game interviews, different interviews and picking some of the greats, bring like Jerry West, you know, Steve Kerr, have a better IQ when it comes to basketball. So which leads me to how I was able to connect the dots, put pieces together and seeing how the outcome would be, you know, everything that's happened that happened with the Cavs. And I said that Isaiah Thomas wouldn't work out. I said that Jay Crowder never shut no one down. Uh, you know, I said that LeBron James is getting much older, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll pull these things up on the screen so you guys can see. People are re overreacting. I picked Boston from the jump to win, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm still sticking with Boston, you know. Everybody was like, no, Boston not going to win. I said that Gordon Hayward would make them, would put them over the top. Even then, people were like, no, Gordon Hayward, it doesn't matter. Gordon Hayward is not this. Gordon Hayward is not that. Gordon Hayward is. Everybody always said, when I said that Gordon Hayward would put them over, way over the top, then they're already going to be because Jason Tatum was NBA ready. I already said that. They told me it didn't matter. Gordon Hayward didn't matter. It didn't matter about Gordon Hayward. Now Gordon Hayward goes down, then they say, oh, well, they're not going to win without Gordon Hayward. But you just said Gordon Hayward didn't matter in the first place. So it doesn't make sense what you're saying. They say that LeBron James, what's funny to me is this. The losing period that the Cavs are going through, as long as they were losing, oh, it's just a regular season. It's just a regular season. LeBron James and the Cavs, they revamped their roster, won two games. Oh, they're going to win the East. They're the best team in the East. They're the best. But you just said regular season doesn't matter. So why are you so happy about the regular season now that they're starting to win? Another thing that people aren't, aren't taking into account is that this team has just been put together within a day. You put this team together, you got teams going, teams are getting ready for all-star break. So, I mean, it's not an excuse, but, like, realistically, teams are getting ready for all-star break. And they're not really – we're going to – you're going to see a different mentality after the all-star break because you're getting ready for the playoffs. Now teams are going to hone in. They're going to zone in. And they're going to, they're going to be absolutely focused on defense. You're going to see a better Boston team. And you're going to see these teams really – focus on things that they need to do to be better by the time the playoffs come. Another thing that people are not taking into account is the fact that teams haven't fully scouted this new Cavs team. You just put this team together. Like, teams scout. They really focus on the strengths and the weaknesses of different players. 
what people fail to realize is Boston still have Al Horford. They still have Kyrie Irving. They're forgetting about the fact that they just picked up Greg Monroe, who was averaging 17 points and 12 rebounds in Phoenix and was putting up 15 points when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks. That team is very versatile and they can give you so many different looks and so many different lineups and matchup problems. Even through this trade, the Cavs never corrected the main problem that has been the issue since the beginning of the season, and that was getting someone who could protect the paint and someone who was a great rebounder. And they were extremely weak in the paint. So you seen what happened when Larry Nance went up against Steve Adams. So Greg Monroe is a great rebounder. You know, he was averaging about eight rebounds when he was playing with the, the Phoenix Suns. And remind you, Boston is still one of the top defensive teams in the NBA. And that's why I still pick Boston to win. Some people may not feel that way because of this new look and this revamped roster from the Cavs. You know, and you have the media constantly overblowing and and constantly overhyping the Cavs or certain situations, they over they overhype it and it distracts you of real basketball and the real talent that the Celtics have. Jalen Brown, you know, Terry Rozier, like they have a lot of great pieces over there. They can give you different looks. And on top of that, what's most important is that Gordon Hayward could come back. He could possibly come back before the playoffs or he could possibly come back after the All-Star break. I'm not into the hype and everything that comes around this stuff. Of course, Kevin Love hasn't come back now. I really don't think that Kevin Love wanted to play with LeBron. The same way I don't think Isaiah Thomas, you're starting to see a lot of these players come out and say that they really didn't want to play with LeBron James, right? But that's just my opinion. Well, it ain't my opinion because it's, you actually seeing that happen. But I don't think Kevin Love really want to play with LeBron James. And I don't think that a lot of those guys did in the first place. Now, a lot of those guys that's on that Cavaliers team is streaky. Some nights they're hot, some nights they're cold. Like, there's not a consistent, I'm going to go out there and give you 15, 16 every single night. You know, or I'm going to hit these threes every single night. Like, you've seen that with J.R. Smith. But Clarkson is like that as well. He can get very streaky. So if you figure out how to force them to play the way LeBron James is used to playing, which I think that they will go back to playing, I think that they're not going to be as effective. And that's the, where you're going to be able to capitalize off. So I think the Cavs pulled out a great trade, but I think that this is going to be towards the future. You know, LeBron James is not going to have no excuse. Well, actually, his, his fans are going to make an excuse for him, of course. I think that LeBron James is going to revert back to his old style and play the way the only way that he knows how to play is isolation basketball, drive the lane. You know, he don't have no great footwork. So he's he's going to have to pass the ball out. He's going to do these jump wild passes. You notice how LeBron was mentally. And that's why I think he played like the way he played versus the Timberwolves because he already knew that they were about to make that trade. Like they, they, they knew. He knew, right? Now, like I, I told you guys, I read body language. Look how LeBron James was celebrating when Jordan Clarkson was hitting the three, turning up and dancing and acting like he know. Now, if you just meet somebody at school, at work, you're not turning up and dancing with them. And that's come on, bro. That's just impossible. Like you're not about to be turned up with somebody and having fun with somebody the first time you meet somebody. That's 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 phony. Like you just don't meet somebody. That goes to show you that. When everything is good, LeBron is your best friend. But as soon as it go bad, he wants you traded. And that proved to me right then and there with that just that little dance. You don't even know this, man, but you turning up with him. You know, I think at the Celtics, they're the underdogs now. That right there makes it even better because once you're the underdog, you have something to prove. Kyrie Irving already has a chip on his shoulder. You know, that's just my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Get in that comment box. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out.